Hey guys, it's Dan Sarnelli. I just wanted to make a video regarding FMC, God's Number, and other Rubik's Cube math and puzzle theory. I, I decided to make this video because of the recent world record by Tomoaki Akiyama, who solved a 3x3 in just 20 moves, God's Number. Tomoaki used a brilliant solution to solve the cube. It was only through experience, knowledge, and a bit of luck that he was able to come across such an efficient solution. However, achieving God's Number in FMC might not be as big of a deal for the event as you would think. In this video, I will explain why. There are about 4.3252 times 10 to the 19th, or 43 quintillion possible positions on the Rubik's Cube. This represents every single way the Rubik's Cube can look while still being able to be solved by applying turns to it. The calculation for this number is actually fairly simple in comparison to some of the larger sized cubes. It's simply the permutation of corners times the orientation of corners times the permutation of edges times the orientation of edges entirely divided by parity or the cases that cannot exist due to the permutation of both edges and corners. Keep in mind that the corner orientation is 3 to the 7th and not 3 to the 8th because the orientation of the final corner is decided by the orientation of the other 7. It is not a factor. The same applies for the edge orientation. The top figure is divided by 2 because it represents every edge case crossed with every corner case. And as we all know, only half of these are actually solvable. Out of the 43 quintillion existing positions, only one of them is a solved cube. This makes up 2.312 times 10 to the negative 20th of all possible positions. What this means is that the chance of picking the solved cube at random from all possible positions is 2.312 times 10 to the negative 18th percent. That value looks like this. So if somebody had ever told you that they accidentally solved a Rubik's Cube by applying random turns, you can now have an easier time judging whether or not they were lying. Each and every one of these positions has an optimal solution. An optimal solution is the solution that solves the position in the fewest number of moves. A move is defined by standard half turn metric. This system allows 18 different possible single turns. These 18 types of turns are represented by either a clockwise quarter turn, counterclockwise quarter turn, or 180 degree turn applied to any of the six faces of the cube. For example, if I scramble the cube with R2, the only optimal solution is R2. The cube can be solved with L2R2L2, L2, or D2R2, 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 D2, or any other algorithm on an infinite list of algorithms that can solve this case. However, the only important solution is the optimal solution, which is R2. In conclusion, if we wanted to restate our prior statement, we could say that out of the 43 quintillion possible positions on the cube, only one of them has an optimal move count of zero. This is true because only one of them is a solved cube, and a solved cube is the only position with an optimal move count of zero. This is relatively easy to figure out, but how many positions have an optimal move count of one? The answer is 18, because there are only 18 positions that can be solved in a single turn. With this knowledge, we can ask, how many positions have an optimal move count of 2? Most people would try to work through this logically by saying that the first move could be one of 18 turns, and the second move could be one of 18 turns, and therefore there are 324 positions with an optimal solution of 2. This logic is entirely wrong, since the actual answer is 243. So the real question is, what are the 81 imaginary positions that we came up with in the first calculation? The answer is fairly simple. 18 times 18 includes scrambles that would double up on turns applied to the same face. For example, L2L prime could be a scramble using that logic. This of course would have an optimal move count of 1, not 2. So to fix this problem, we could calculate 18 times 15. This would remove any doubling up on turns applied to the same face. However, the answer to this is 270. This is closer to the actual answer of 243 than our prior calculation was. But where are the 27 imaginary positions coming from? The answer is cancellations. Just because a position has an optimal move count of 2 doesn't mean it only has one optimal move count of 2. For example, our calculation of 18 times 15 counts RL and LR as two different positions when they both have the same outcome. This same notion applies for F and B turns and U and D turns. So you can have three different types of turns on either side giving you nine positions per axis. Since there are three axes, we can conclude that 18 times 15 minus these 27 cancellations gives you the correct answer of 243. 
If you think that this is starting to become confusing, consider that we have only dealt with two moves and 243 positions when the cube is capable of 20 moves and 43 quintillion positions. If these calculations were easy, they would have been figured out in the 1970s with the invention of the cube. However, it took decades to figure out what God's number actually is. In 1995, it was proven that 20 was a lower bound for God's number. Michael Reed proved the super flip could not be solved in fewer than 20 moves. This didn't necessarily mean that God's number was 20, just that it couldn't be less than 20, or more than 29, which was the upper bound at that time. The upper bound then dropped to 28, then 27, then 26, then 25, then 23, then 22. It wasn't until 2010 that the upper bound was lowered to 20, matching the lower bound and proving that God's number is exactly 20. This means that all 43 quintillion positions you can turn the cube into have an optimal move count of 20 or less, i.e. no Rubik's cube requires more than 20 turns to solve. But what are the distributions? You may find them shocking. About two-thirds of all positions have an optimal move count of 18. This means that given a random cube, it is more likely to have an optimal move count of 18 than all other positions combined. This is where the move count peaks, so to speak, if you're looking at a graph. About one-fourth of all positions have an optimal move count of 17. This means that the vast majority of all positions have an optimal move count of either 17 or 18. In any given average of 100 solves, only about 8 or 9 of the scrambles will have an optimal move count of anything other than 17 or 18. 19 is third most likely optimal move count. 16 comes in a very close fourth. A 19 optimal move count position has about a 3.47% chance of occurring, while a 16 move count position has about a 2.54% chance. From this point, it is relatively straightforward. 15 is next most likely, then 14, then 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, then 8. The next optimal move count that is most likely is 20. Yes, that's right you are far more likely to get a scramble with an optimal move count of 8 than you are to get one of 20. The probability of getting a scramble with an optimal solution of 20 is actually much closer to that of 7, although it is still more. In conclusion, it should be evident that although the world record by Tomoaki Akiyama is an amazing achievement, it doesn't change anything for the event itself. It's simply another world record. He did not find the optimal solution for the scramble given. Although I don't know of the scramble that was used for his record, it is most likely an optimal solution of 17 or 18. It may have been 19, but almost certainly not. But was it 20? The answer is simply no. I would be willing to bet my life and the life of everyone watching this video that the scramble used did not have an optimal solution of 20. Anyone who understands probability knows how incredibly safe of a bet that is. The likelihood of his 20 move solution being optimal is worse than the FMC world record dropping down to 8. So, as you can see, the FMC event will carry on as normal. Congratulations to Tomoaki Akiyama.